You're watching Bionic Dance. Don't run on automatic, it's dead. Please think. If God, why evil? That's one of the most common questions I hear and one of the most challenging. There are only two reasonably possible answers. Either God doesn't exist or God's real and he's a complete dick. Let's do this. <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. So, whence cometh evil? I'm not actually convinced that evil, as most people seem to define it, even exists. But we'll get into that a little later. First, we have to ask why a loving God would let things suck so badly. Often the questioner has looked around at the world and seen the suffering and injustice and pain and evil and concluded, how can there possibly be a God who is all-powerful and all-good given the state of things? Well, yeah. You'd think that a god who actually gave a shit would make things a little more Eden-esque, a little more paradise-y, don't you think? But when I hear that question, I often want to respond to the person asking it, have you thought about the nature of the word evil for a moment? You see, inherent in the word evil is the idea of oughtness. And this is why I'm convinced that evil doesn't exist. Well, except for William Shatner, anyway. Nothing ought to be a certain way because the universe does not, cannot give a shit. Except that we're part of the universe and most of us do care. It's more accurate to say that there is no universal rule book all must follow. But if nothing ought to be a certain way and your God exists, wouldn't that mean that not even he can dictate the rules? Or are you saying that he's exempt from this little feature of the universe? And if so, justify that statement. When you say that something is evil, you're saying it ought not to have happened. It ought not to have been allowed. Telling me what I mean when I say something. Back to Berlin. Look at what Hitler did. Look at what the Khmer Rouge did. Look at what happened in Rwanda. Look at the violence in the Middle East. That ought not to be the case. Well, sure, it ought not to have been. By my standards. By most people's standards. But why? Because it hurts. We have empathy, and we wouldn't wish that pain on anyone else, let alone ourselves. True, there is nothing inherent to the universe that agrees or disagrees with us. But to suggest that oughtness has to be absolute, objective, and inarguable is to misunderstand the word. But the problem is this. If there is no God, if we live in a purely atheistic universe, then everything that happens simply happens. There is no ought to anything. Everything is simply governed by the blind, impersonal, uncaring forces of time plus chance plus natural selection. Nothing ought to be the case. And the existence of a God changes this how exactly? In fact, the very best you can say as an atheist is you don't like something. I don't like murder. I don't like ethnic cleansing. I don't like rape. But those are just my personal preferences. You can't call them evil because there is no way the world ought to be. Okay, so I can't call them evil. So I can only say I don't like them. And this makes a difference how exactly? Because there is no way that the universe ought to be? Does that mean I should just let shitty things happen? But if you remove God, as atheists like to do, there's really only two places that you can base morality. Either every human being gets to make up morality for themselves, and then the problem is you have seven billion little godlets running around all disagreeing with each other. I can see how that might be a problem, but does being a problem mean that it's not true? Or we agree that the state gets to decide what is right and wrong, and then you have the tyranny of the majority. States dictate morality? So it's immoral to drive above the speed limit. Oh sure, you might be endangering people. A little. And most people like it safe, but immoral? Do you want to talk about the zoning commissioner leash laws next? I'm wondering if immoral means the same thing in our two worlds. But in either case, whether it's the state or individuals inventing the rules, he said any time anybody looks at you and says you ought to do something, you can look them squarely in the eye and say, yeah, says who? Uh-huh, you can. I say again. And life sucks. Life's unfair. Cope. All moral claims, all talk of good and evil, if there is no God, basically crash and uh, flounder and sink on the rock, on the reef of atheism. And the existence of a God changes this because... I can still say, says who? And if someone tells me God, I can ask what gives God the authority to make up the rules. And I can ask how God's rules are any less opinion than anybody else's. We all inherently know that there are such things as good and evil. Telling me what I know or don't know? It's a peddling. When we see injustice or murder or violence, our instinctive reaction is to say, no, it's wrong, it's evil, it ought not to be the case. 
That's not inherently knowing good and evil. That's empathy. You said it yourself before. In fact, the very best you can say as an atheist is you don't like something. I don't like murder. I don't like ethnic cleansing. I don't like rape. What more do you really need to declare that something is wrong that it ought not to be the case? Can you show me how to tell the difference between thinking that something will be unpleasant and thus ought not to be versus inherently knowing good and evil? It seems to me as though you're looking for certainty and I don't think you're going to find it. And it also seems as though if you don't find it, you're going to make it up. But that primal cry that comes out from within us only makes sense if there is a God behind the universe who actually gives a foundation, a ground to good and evil and genuine morality. Then why do so many of the things your God does in this book trigger that primal scream? So the paradox is, the moment that you raise the problem of evil, thinking you can use it to dismiss God, you actually end up arguing to God. That's only the case if you want to have a childish war of semantics. Good, evil, tolerable, intolerable, awesome, shitty. These words all mean essentially the same thing, except to someone who's trying to word game God into existence. The presence of evil doesn't lead us to atheism, it leads us to the recognition that there is a God and there are real moral values. Except that you're dodging what the argument actually is. The point is that the Christian claim about God is that he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-loving. Yet pain and suffering still happen. In other words, the Christian claim is a contradiction, unless you'd like to assert that letting people hurt and die is somehow loving. If God exists and lets suffering happen, then either he doesn't know about it, can't do anything about it, or doesn't want to. And since the Christian claim is that God can and would do these things, then at the very least the Christian God, as described, cannot exist. And yet you've dodged this argument entirely throughout the whole video. Either you're being dishonest, or you're being something it would be uncharitable to say regarding your intelligence. Maybe both. And then it raises the next question. Okay, if God does exist, if I can't escape that, what has that God done about evil and suffering? And my word is that's something that Christianity has a lot to say about. But that's perhaps an answer for another time. No, actually. That's the answer, or at least part of it, that I want right now. Otherwise, the case you've made here holds no water. But, alas, his video is over. So until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. And remember, if it can't be in your hand, it's all in your head.